Next, let's go ahead and add a logo into the corner. Now, not every lower third will have a logo or a bug, but it is very common. So if you do have the need to add the logo or bug to the corner, be sure to place it before adding the text boxes so you have some idea of position and size. Let's go ahead and take this logo here and I'll drag it over. It's quite large, so I'll press Command T for free transform and then Command Zero. On a PC, that's simply Control T and Control Zero. Let's go ahead and scale these down. I'm holding down Shift and Option, which scales towards the center evenly and I'll reposition this by dragging it to the corner. There we go. Let's zoom back in, Command Plus, and we're at 100%. That's pretty good. Let's make that just a little bigger and nudge it into place. Again, noticing we're keeping it inside of the title safe box for readability. I'll press Return and we'll name that well, first, while we're here, let's add the drop shadow. That's good. And I think that's pretty clean. We'll click OK. And let's double click on the layer name. We'll call that logo bug. There we go. I'm going to load my default values of color. D for default, X to toggle. Loaded the black and white there. And let's take the text tool here. I'll go ahead and click with the horizontal type tool and I am going to click and drag to define a text box. This is where the text is going to stay. It'll automatically wrap when it hits the edge. Let's type our first line of text here. Notice we can't see it, so we'll select that text and we'll pick a little bit of a calmer font. Let's start with something like Stone Sands. There we go. We'll make it left justified and I can go a bit smaller. That's pretty good. And I could actually tweak this here because that text can go a little higher on the bar. There we go. Now it's snapping. If I don't want that, I could just go into the View menu and uncheck Snap. And now it will not be quite so grabby to the edges of things. That worked pretty well. James Ball. Hard Return. Director of Photography. Now, I can't see the text because it's cut off, so let's expand this box here to make it a little easier to see. And looks like what I need to do is adjust the text a little bit more. We'll select that line of text, click and drag, and let's go ahead and make that a little smaller first off. There we go. Get all the text selected. Good. And we'll call up the character palette here. And what I need to do is change the letting of the line and set it to auto so that text will automatically adjust. Now that's pretty good. Let's take another font in that same family. And we'll try something here like an italic. That looks pretty clean. We'll bump that up on point size just a little bit. And we can do the same for the top line since we've got some space. We'll bump that up to 40. And let's take a look at that. That's pretty clear. We'll position that within the title save area. Let's go ahead and turn the save title overlay off. And I'm going to add a slight drop shadow to improve the readability of that text. That's helping. Uh, I might also try a little bit of an outer glow. Now, don't have a bright outer glow if you have a dark drop shadow. So we'll change this to normal and set the color to black. That's pretty good. Let's just make that a little smaller. We'll only go with a two pixel size and knock the opacity down. And you see that that's just providing a very slight edge to that. Take that up just a little. Good and good. Without, with. Just a slight edge to help it cut. Let's go ahead and press OK. And I can close this box. And what you have there is the lower third. Now, the only things that are missing is to pre-flight this and then save it off in the proper format. Photoshop, fortunately, offers a spell check. So if you go under the Edit menu, you can choose to check spelling. And it says everything's fine. Now, to make sure you're checking in the right language, you actually have to open back up the character palette. And at the bottom there, you'll see a list of all the languages that Photoshop knows how to check. So. 
If you are currently in Germany, you may want to set it to German, as opposed to if you are in Russia, Russian. So make sure you choose the correct language that you are using for your graphics. Once we are set here, this graphic merely needs an alpha channel, and I am going to cheat a little bit here and harness the power of those video actions. We turn off everything that's not involved in the final graphic, and I can then call back up the actions palette. In those video actions at the top is an action that is called alpha channel from visible layers. The one below, visible layers inverted, is for those of you working with AVID systems that need an inverted alpha. Let's select this top one here, and I'll click play and it will create the new alpha channel for me. Yes, go ahead, continue. Now, in your mind, nothing may have happened, but if we toggle over to the channels palette, we'll see that sure enough, Photoshop has created an alpha channel with ramp transparency for that lower third. At this point, we simply need to save the file. So I'll choose File, Save As, and let's go ahead and pick a location. and hit save. There we go. The document is saved and because it is a layered file we can easily open it up and make editing changes later. There you have a lower third graphic ready to cut into your show.